All right, so this is part two of the video, um, and you're now looking back at the back part of the room, and you can see I have some instruments, a lot of books set up, some speakers. I've got the thumpers on the bottom with the mid-range and tweeters disabled, just using the woofers essentially as a bass extension. I've got these nice Thiel speakers as reference monitors, which I deeply, deeply love. And yes, they were free. You too can achieve this, folks. It happens. Not everybody can, but you know. So lots of books. There's my little display with Beethoven and Bartok. These are all books on music. And this is a... Well, Carl can tell you what this is. This is a fun little useful device where there's a microphone in there. You can't really see it because it's too dark. Um, okay, and backing away slowly here. Sorry, I'm a little slow. That's my writing desk, which is right now a mess, but oftentimes I will sit down and just handwrite things there. It is next to the piano, which, as you can imagine, is a good thing, uh, because oftentimes I'll be improvising something and then I'll quickly jump over here and write. Or I'll be writing something here and I'll quickly jump over there and play or improvise on it. Um, that's just some artwork to inspire me. Uh, there's a whole host of scores and things that, and records and stuff that are inspirational materials plus my own scores that I'm publishing. Um, let's see. That, my dear musician friends, in case you don't know, you should befriend. It is your friend. That's some Beethoven. Okay, so here's the front of the studio. That's my dad over there in the left. It's a mess right now, so forgive me. But this is uh, my workspace. And there's a, it's hard to see some of the stuff there. Um, but there's a mixing board on the right. There's a tower of stuff on the right behind it. You can see there's a two monitor speakers there against the wall and controllers and on the left we have a synthesizer set up with various stuff and a turntable etc etc all very good fun stuff and i will close in on it soon so you can see it over here just more shelf space some amps and more instruments that's a explorer copy so don't let's talk i mean <laughs> um and that was also free and here on top we have, yes, I said and. Here on top we have a QS8 by Alesis, which was a great keyboard a long time ago. Now it's kind of dated, but I use it as a controller. And every now and then I use it for some really, really good bass sounds. Um, and it is sitting on top of one of my all-time favorite pieces of gear, which is a Rode, Fender Rode stage piano, uh, which I traded for another keyboard. So it is one of my prized possessions. I deeply love it, and I play it all the time. Um, okay, let's see. Let's go closing in on this stuff over here. So, the mixing board. Uh, this is a Personas SL32, which you know I know doesn't impress Carl or the place that he works, but me being a poor musician, um, honestly, uh, it does the job and it has movable faders and oh my god wait what what's happening stop that's not supposed to happen that's just freaky something's possessed actually it's not possessed folks that's just a it's a test routine i just did that to freak you out okay thank you all right the joke's over so that has a whole bunch of things hooked into it etc etc um down here are some amps. We have another mixing board to kind of control what goes to what amp. This, this little thing over here is a strange device, which is a networking box called AVB, Audio Video Over Bridge. And um, uh, it's very cool, uh, still new in some ways, um, but it's been working quite well. It allows me to send audio over an ethernet cable yes these are just the boring little tiny cheap ethernet cables instead of using a very expensive snake 
I can just send 32 channels over an Ethernet cable or more. And there you go. So we have some sound modules. Uh, oh, geez, what else? I don't even know. Yeah, we've got, this is a very cool piece of gear. This is an Alesis, um, which uh, the ML9600, which is a recording unit. It's a two-track mastering deck, which I still use. I love it. It's a very, very lovely sound to it, and sometimes I will just turn it on and record improvisations. It has a CD player. It also has a hard drive uh, where I record onto, and I can burn high-definition CDs. This is a dual tape deck, which I use all the time. Uh, this is a Tascam 302, which I bought used at some, I don't know, some store for like 50 bucks and cleaned it up and it works beautifully. It's practically untouched. Um, this old thing is an Alesis um, ADAT, which uses an old type of tape. It looks like a VHS tape. Those of you who are probably too young to know what VHS is. Um, it's a huge kind of a cassette thing, and it's eight tracks of digital, and I love the sound of it. Um, I still have folks and friends and clients who have ADAT, and so I use it to transfer stuff this thing is an audio, uh, is a headphone distribution amp, one of several that I have here, uh, to route the output to various artists so that they can hear the mix properly. This is called a tuner, so I can put the radio on and record it and do whatever. This is a mini disc, um, which is probably going to make weird noises right now. Oh, it's not plugged in. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Haven't used it in a while. Um, but I do use it every once in a blue moon, and mini discs are kind of freaky and weird. I'll bring that in. That's a power conditioner, um, and this is a monitor. It's called an Amphion, uh, which I really love. And actually, because of Carl's partner in his studio at Firehouse 12, Greg DeCrosta, he recommended these to me, and I fell in love with them. They're absolutely amazing sounding monitors, um, very expensive, but not in the audio world, frankly. Um, yes, that's my sweetie. And there's just various artifacts that I love in the dungeon. That's my Mac Mini, guess what? Does that look familiar, folks? Yeah, I'm doing all of this on a 2012 refurbished Mac Mini with a terabyte SSD drive and maxed out RAM and it is just fine. I put it on a little a little deck here to help cool it. Um, sometimes it gets warm. And <clears throat> that is a, a PC40 controller, um, which I use, sorry, it's not in focus, there we go. I use that with Ableton Live, which is currently up on the screen. And there's more live. That's my my grandnephew peeking out behind there. This is one of my favorite pieces of gear of all time. It's a Roland V-Synth. And I bought this a long time ago, and I still love it. But it is showing signs of age, and it's a little long of the tooth, but I use it daily. Um, now, oh yeah, going back to just uh, this for a second. You can see that I have some clips loaded in here, it's hard to see, um, into Ableton. So if I press play, you can hear some cool... This is a project I was working on. And you can see that this is just MIDI information happening here, okay? It's just MIDI information happening. I've played it into my, my I played it via the V-Synth. That's not the V-Synth actually making the sound, by the way. Um, sorry, focus is a pain. Um, I'm using something called East-West Composer Cloud, and I've chosen the East-West Women's Choir from the Hollywood Choir's Gold. It's a fantastic sounding chorus. It's expensive, 300 bucks a year, but you know what? If you're in the business, this is a, a steal.
because it's got a lot of great sounds. Okay, now we go over this way. And one of my pride and joys is up here. This is a lovely piece of machinery that I cannot ever get tired of. Um, it's an Electrocomp EML200. And this thing is quite rare now. Uh, it's hard to find them and it has a very unique sound. And below it is a incredible find. I found the controller for it, um, the same blue face, which is even more rare to have them together, uh, and traded that for a piece of gear. This is a drum machine from a very long time ago. This is an Ace Tone Rhythm Ace, an FR3. And oh my God, do I love this thing. It's very, very simple. Very simple. Um, but you know, okay. And then down here, sorry, I'm trying to move slowly so you don't get motion sick. Down here is a Korg Chaos DJ Mixer, which is kind of a hard to find item now. Uh, but I love it because it has the Chaos Pad here in the middle and you can use this to control stuff. So, for example, right now the synth is on, so you can hear some sounds happening. If I start up the drum machine, you can hear it making kind of a nice cantankerous sound. And uh, so now, if I can play in. Play around some knobs here. Yeah. Change my hands so you can see better. Better focus. Anyway, you get the idea. This is pretty... If I change the speed on the drum machine, guess what happens? There we go. Ooh, that's kind of a nice sound. I might end up working with that a little bit. Once I get a sound that I like and believe you me every single time